Welcome, one and all, back to Horizon Zero Dawn, and welcome to the Frozen Wilds expansion. This I've been very excited for ever since it was announced in E3, because I adored Horizon Zero Dawn. You guys know I loved it. And being able to just come back and do this, I'm happy. I'm just genuinely really, really happy. So, before anything else, let's consult what is new. To start with... Hello, all of this. All of this beauty. That's why I'm here, of course. We're going to make our way around, up past the Grave Horde, and go see what's going on up here. Uh, I filtered the map just to remove machine sites, and... What else did I filter? Campfires. Actually, I filtered pretty much everything out, now that I look at it. We can put these all back on now. This is fine. First of all, I was checking out skills and I was like, why do I have skill points? We have some new skills! So let's take a look at these because I haven't looked at these yet. We've got the Traveler skills. Mounted pickup. Gather resources and search downed enemies while mounted. Yoink. Shard Salvager. Disassemble resources and modifications into 50% of their metal va shard value. Cool. Expert Carver. Increased chance to loot skins, bones, lenses, and hearts. Mount Repair. Repair a damaged mount using metal shards. I can't afford all of these. Repair any overridden machine using metal shards. Increases mount health and repair speed. Press square to launch a jumping attack from your mount. Damages medium machines and can take down small machines and humans. That's pretty sick. Increases resource inventory slots by 20%. Hello! Yoink. Cool. And we'll pick up six more points as we go ahead to pick up mount repair and dismount strike. Inventory is good. Crafting is good. Nothing new has appeared here. Quests. All as well here. I saw something else that was notable. What did I see that was notable? I don't even remember anymore. Well, whatever it is, I've lost it already. So, over here in the notebook, we have a couple new things. First of all, five new... Machines. Um, some sort of scrapper. A big bear. Actually, this is the big bear. This is something else. I don't know. Angry turtle. Uh, some birds. And, I don't know, a freaking tree. We'll find out about these guys soon enough. New frozen wild collectibles. Nine pigments. Pigments used by Brook Rock Painters. Trade sets and Song's Edge for rewards. And six animal figurines. Old world artifacts unique to the cut. Traded hollow hall for rewards. Data points. <laughs> okay, so we have how many of these across? 10? 11. 22, 23 Frozen Wilds audio data points. 12 text data points. 13 text data points for the quest. That's for the world. And three holograms. My game progression, despite myself ending at 100%, has reverted to 99.53%. Don't know why. I'll have to figure that out later. Frozen Wilds progression? Don't know what any of these things require, but we've got to get that up to 100%. Cool. That's enough of that. I think it's time to get moving. I, of course, have unlocked just summon mount. So, Charger, lead me into the cut. Right, you can gather while mounted now. That is pretty cool. It slows me down a little bit. It's cool. Okay, you can make it up this hill. I know you can. Alright, let's go across. Are you more comfortable going sideways? A little bit, but not as much as I would like. Oh, 
let's check the map to make sure I'm on track. Yeah, I'm basically trying to go right over this mountain instead of... You know what, maybe it's smarter to do that on foot. We'll call a charger once we've come up down off the other side of the mountain. Yeah, this is much faster. Ah, yes, the Grave Horde. I can descend this. Quick way down. You'll be cool, Aloy. You have, like, super shielding. Don't sweat it. See? No problem. Alright. Now, I assume this is the way I need to go to get into the next zone. I could be horribly, horribly wrong, but... I mean, it's right ahead of us, so I might as well go this way and see what happens, you know? Is a campfire up here? Was there always a campfire up here? No, no, that's new. These look like Banuke markings. Is this the way to their territory? Oh, heck yeah it is. Alright, let's do this. frozen wild. What do you think we're going to learn about out here? I hope we get to learn about one of the other AIs as part of the uh, Gaia project? I don't remember what it's been called. The Zero Dawn project. Duh. Oh? Something is up ahead. You don't look like you know this path, Hunter. Well, I'm willing to learn it. Let's talk, Yariki. Seems you're a long way from... anything. Where does this trail lead? For me, it leads south. Away from the Banuk. Past the Grave Horde. Banukai, watch over me. This is the quickest way out of the cut, instead of going all the way through Osaram territory. And take it from me. You want a quick way out of the cut. I haven't even arrived yet. Why would I want to leave? Strange machine attacks? A curse on the mountain? It's enough to make me look forward to Meridian. You're going to Meridian. Yes. I was named an envoy to the Karja King's court. No one else wanted to do it. It's not so bad. I just recount the songs from Ban Or, and the Karja draw their funny little glyphs. And I tell them of the machine's growing anger, and the Karja King still offers aid, even though he knows the Banuk will not accept it. What kind of strange machines? And what kind of curse? Machines tougher and crazier than anything in the south, I heard. And smoke comes off the mountain like a funeral pyre all day and night. But like I said, I just pass through now. Right, right, right. So, the location of Horizon Zero Dawn is set in Colorado, and just north to that is Yellowstone. Yellowstone. And smoke coming out of a mountain in Yellowstone makes me think, whoops! What sort of place is the cut? It's on the edge of everywhere. The edge of Ban Or, the edge of the mountains, the edge of other tribes' territories. It's suffered in the war with the Karja. But it suffered before that, too. Life there is a test to survive out on the edge. Not exactly homey. I can see why you'd want to move on. <laughs> Home is what you carry in a roll on your back. Well, thanks for the warning. I'm curious about these machines, though. And the warning rolled off you. I understand. You adventurers are all alike. Good luck. It's cool. I'm a super badass. I will raid your supplies, though. If you let me, I will do it, so... Alright, which way are we gonna go? Well, certainly not that way. Oh, this way, obviously. What do you do with Eloy? This path leads to the cut. You have nothing to offer besides useless mysticism. The Eclipse won't stand idle while you waste time playing in the snow. Return to your desk. Surprised you're still checking up on me. I thought you had moved on. Forgive me for still being concerned with the fate of the world. I was thinking, Banuk shamans thread blue cables through their skin, right? Kind of like someone else we know, huh? So maybe the real reason you want me to stay clear of the Banuk is to stay clear of your past. It's not the past that concerns me, Eloy. It's the future. Or possibly like thereof. Which is why you should stop prattling and get back to what matters. But as usual, you don't wish. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I will. Alright, we all know silence can suck it, so I am completely 100% okay with going in the opposite direction he wants me to. The fate of the world is fine, I already saved it once. Also, Silence runs off with Hades at the end of the game, so, like, he hasn't done that yet, but I'm still mad at him. Ooh. This one's a new predator. I can see the heat coming off it. Hey, babe. Who's this? Daemonic Scorcher. A very agile and dangerous combat machine with fire augmented melee attacks and a mounted mine launcher for ranged equipment. Uh, weak to ice. There's a blaze canister on its back, which is weak to fire. Mine launcher, which we can just shred off. Power generator. Get an electrical explosion. Just drops regular things. All right. Hey, bud! You're really just going up that way, huh? That kind of bugs me. I don't like you walking off away from me when I want to fight you. Oh, there we go. So if it's weak to ice, let's start with... I, I don't have an ice weapon on me. I can fix that. Hey, Neon! Welcome to my happy place. Alright, ice weapon, ice weapon. There you go. I guess I could just use ice bombs. Nah. Alright, let's uh, have some blades. Oh, you recovered from that really quick, huh? Where's my tear blast arrows? There they are. Okay, that hurt quite a lot. Ow, you just keep going, huh, buddy? Pretty rude. Well, this is my first robot from this new expansion, and it's a toughie. I mean, I'm out of practice, sure, but still. This guy put up some fight. Nasty, rude. Let's check my map. God, I'm not even in the... 
Hey, a tall neck. That's what I want to see. What a rude, rude guy. I guess I probably could have stealth attacked it. That would have been a good start to doing a lot of damage to it. Oh, well, that's cool. I'll get in shape. I could forget what warmth feels like out here. Yeah, it really wanted to know about me, and it took a beating, too. What the hell is that? Party little plant. Yo! Okay, that's a welcome, I guess. Hello! Oh! <laughs> that's awesome! The frozen wilds! I love it! <laughs> you sure you'll be warm enough up here, Nora? I've worked up a sweat from the climb. I'm so excited to be playing this. You gonna be okay, Aloy? You really seem cold. Our magic techno armor doesn't you seem to insulate to us. Outlander? Not that you'll stay long. This is Song's Edge, biggest settlement in the cut. These are dangerous lands, Outlander. Deadly, even. I'll be okay. Anything cool around here? Hot damn, that is a view. Yeah. Yellowstone really wants to uh, bang. Rising from the mountain. And the village too. What's it for? It's gonna be wild if Yellowstone bangs. I'll take that. You died on Thunder's drum. Your songs will not be forgotten. Hey. Alright, let's look around and find some people to talk to. Give me some names. What these ra- oh, that's a lot of people down there. None of these regulars. Give me a real NPC. Give me someone I can have a conversation with. Shock coils. No room. I'm so far beyond coils. Right, that's enough of that. Let's go find someone I can actually talk to. I very much want a real conversation. Are either of you people anything? No. Must be something big going on. Most of the village is moving towards that the Young hunters have learned a lesson from Thunder's drum. Sometimes. Alright. Get ready for a rare sight, Nora. Bergrin, purveyor of necessities. Hi. Most of the time, the Banuk burn their dead, but not today. Because the bodies couldn't be recovered. Aye, a nasty business. All their best warriors, lost. So they're getting a different kind of send-off.
Grasp your grief, my hunters, and kill it! For our kin sees the fate all Banuk long for. Falling with their spears striking steel. Their struggle is over now. You have witnessed their spirits rise up into the blue sky and beyond to the blue light. But our struggle is only beginning. Soon, we will again take up the hunt against the daemon that frenzies the machines against us. And so I ask you, can you summon the courage of our fallen kin? Will you fight and die as well as they did? My courage, my spear! Blood is in your teeth, Oratok! We are Banuk. Our enemies. Our prey. The daemon. That frenzies the machines. Machines that wiped out their best. And what do they want to do? Go back up there. Fools. A little advice, uh, for free. Uh... Aloy. Aloy. I've been up here for two long winters, and I still can't make sense of the Banuk. Take this ruckus. It started with one of their shamans, uh, Aurea, spouting on about spirits and demons up on Thunder's drum. So they march their Warwick up there, and half of them get slaughtered by machines. When Aria vanished, I thought that Crazy might have gone with her. But no. Here's Big Aratok, gearing them up to do it all over again. Alright, well, we won't ask about silence just yet. And Aurea is the one who spoke about this daemon? That's right. Told Aratok and the others that it lives up on Thunder's drum. And they believed him. But you don't. <laughs> Look, I don't know what Aurea found up there. A shaman's not going to talk to an outlander. The machines in the cut are getting more vicious, that's a fact. It could be because of the daemon, or it could be because they all got indigestion, for all I know. But Araya's not around to explain. She took off, and no one knows why. I wouldn't be surprised if the daemon is, like, one of the uh, AIs. It might be Hephaestus. It could be one of the others. Is Aratok a renowned warrior around here? He's a wary chieftain. His voice carries a lot of respect. Not that you hear much of it. Man talks about as much as a dead fish. But when he and Aurea came to town with their Warwick, it drew more Banuk to this little burg than I'd ever seen. Know what else I saw, Aloy? My own little trade boot, stretching all the way back to the claim. Then, he goes and leads them off to their death at the claws of angry machines. Uh, so much for my best customers. What are these Warricks about, Burgrind? Some sort of tribe within the tribe? Man, not like our clans back home. You don't get born into these things. They hold tryouts. Prove your best at something and you might get a place. Some Warricks come and go. Some last as long as Mel. The whole Banuk territory, Banur. It's just a bunch of the biggest, oldest Warricks. I'm not sure if I'm less confused or more confused. <laughs> well, here's the sure thing. Each Warrick has a chieftain and a shaman. They make the decisions. All well and good, except the chieftains are hard-headed, and the shamans have their heads in the clouds. We're getting some good Banuk lore. I'm enjoying this. It's you said good. you've lived out here for two winters? Aye. Uh, back home, some fur traders told me about this steel-forsaken heap of tents. Good location. Ripe for change. We were barely scraping by until this place started filling up for Araya. A great prophet is coming, they said. Uh, I heard prophet. Honest mistake. Not that the Banook are stingy, they just prefer to keep trade among themselves. We could get through to enough of them. We could really put this place on the map. Or at least on a map. 
We? Me and my dog. Mm, my assistant, Varja. My assistant and my daughter. We seem to get along better as business partners. Her mother wanted me to show her a trade. She started tinkering with weapons. Say, when you need a break from this Banuk carry-on, stop in and see her. You're both, uh... Hmm. How do I put it? Badasses? Women? No, 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 no. I independent. Look for her at Long Notch, the easternmost Banuk camp. I like Bergrind. He's good. What is it about the Banuk you can't make sense of? Mm. Well, everything's a test to them. A hardship to endure. A challenge to survive. Seems like they don't have much of a choice in a place like this. Yeah. A land cold enough to crack teeth. Filled with wild animals. You think they'd accept a little reasonably priced aid? Well, believe me, I've tried to convince them. But a Banuk with nothing left to prove might just lie down and die. Have you ever heard of a man named Silence? Tall, deadly serious, cables in his skin? Like a shaman? Uh, I've heard that name once or twice, but always whispered. Like some boogeyman the Banuk want to forget. I'm not sure what went down, but I got the impression he messed with the Conclave. Or they messed with him. Conclave. All the most important shamans gather in Banur from time to time to keep up with the latest mumbo jumbo. No idea how they all fit into one tent without those crazy headdresses getting locked up on each other. Aurea's been to that shindig, but when I asked her what it's like, she just gave me a dirty look. So if you want to know more, you'll have to find her and make her like you, I guess. Good luck. No, I'm I'm on Gaia's good side. I'm cool. Is Gaia the name of the main one? I'm pretty sure it was Gaia. It's been so long. I want to know more about this Daemon. Mm -mm. It's crazy talk, Aloy. Or there's something to it. Something connected to how the machines behave. Then you need to find Aurea. She was last seen headed for the mountains they call the Ice Rests. <sighs> I've heard only the shamans know the trail beyond those frozen peaks. Mm. But I do know where you could find her apprentice, Naltuk. He went north of the river, chasing rumors. Rumors? Not the good kind. Sudden attacks in the snow. Strange new structures. Some say a new machine, like no one That's seen Hephaestus. Before. Well, now I'm definitely interested. Thanks for the talk, Burgrind. Don't mention it. I wonder if our talk could tell me more about Araya or Thunder's Drum. Seems we have some Maybe worth a shot? Yeah, that's def that's definitely, definitely, definitely Hephaestus. Hephaestus is the one in charge of building machines. It would be the one that also designs them. About that free advice, Burgrind. For you, I'll give it twice. But ne well, I've got See all this. Around, Hope so. No, Can I shot with you, now, buddy? Back again. Hmm. So. Time to head out. Okay. I won't tell you. Uh, let's talk to the chief. Hey. I do not want to hear this talk from you again. Doubt is heavier than a week snow. Forgive me, my chieftain. We will be ready for the next attempt. But this will not be an attempt. It must be done. Do you understand? My chieftain. Good. Outlander, I suppose you wish to speak. Hi. This Damon you talked about. If you are hardy enough, you can venture out and see the signs yourself. It has changed the machines, made them fiercer, stronger. But what is it? A matter for the shamans to debate. Did your Warwick come from this place? No, he rallied most of our hunters from across Banyur to face the threat of the demon. But I was born here and stayed to fight the Karja when others retreated into the mountains. A few of my old warriors remain with me, those who survived. You're set on going back to the mountain? I have put my word to it. Even with the risks being so great? The risk of what? Death? It would be a worse fate to bow our heads to the challenge and say too much. Aurea knows about this, Damon. Where would I talk to her? She does a shaman's work. 
That is not for the eyes and ears of others. Certainly not an Outlander's. Wow, rude. There are other Werax in Song's Edge, too? Yes. The village has its own lie for all Banuku who need trade or shelter. After the war ended, it sprang up from what was once a campsite, quick as the bloom between frosts. Perhaps it will last until the Karja seek war again. Wow. There are other where Yeah, it's... after the war, perhaps. Well, I guess that's it then. Good. I prefer deeds to words. Right. You'll see some deeds. I'm a badass. Hey, there's a side quest over here. Let's go talk about that. Hey, who dis? Hi. You seem sad, stranger. I heard you mention a flood. Yes. A sudden deluge. Without rain or melt to explain it. I'm Lao Lai. The drummer of Deep Din. Or at least I was. Until it disappeared under the waters. Deep Din? What's that? A hollow. Carved out by the old ones. A chamber, a basin, and a musical instrument all at once. My life. My calling. I'd explain it by playing for you if I could. But its pipes are deep under the water now. So Deep Din is a place and a musical instrument? Yes. Pipes that carry a perfect tone beneath a sonorous basin. A wondrous edifice the old ones used to carry music far and wide. During the war, my father played the pipes to rally the Banuk against the Karja. I'm the drummer now. But our battles are few and far between. Mostly I play for the joy of it. Or to remember my family. Of course, if the waters don't recede, what's the point of joy? Or remembering. So the waters came fast. One day it was dry. The next, the nearby river had risen and the entire basin was flooded. I don't understand it. There was no rain, not even any clouds, and yet the river rose higher than I'd ever seen it. And there it remains. A flood without rain. That is strange. Where is this place? I'll have a look if I'm in the area. Just northwest of here. Look all you like, but I don't see what good it'll do. The floodwaters aren't going anywhere. How does one ask a river to relent? What a log. Okay, now talk to me about this traitor. Hi. Banuk Champion Bow. Interesting. Play movie. Hmm. Keep the bowstring drawn on this specialized war bow to charge up more powerful shots. Power shot bow. Striker bow. Interesting. I need blue gleam. I'm interested. Uh, Banuk Ice Hunter. Kaja Blazon Master, nor a Silent Hunter Master. All take more blue gleam. Various things I've already got. Little Gambler's Box. Again, blue gleam. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I need badger bone, goat bone, and goat and badger. Oh, goats and badgers. Those are a new animal. Okay, sick. We're gonna have to keep our eye open for animals, y'all. No, Alright, how are we doing here? It's a new quest just ahead. There's another merchant. It's two different kinds of merchants. What's the deal with that? Let's take a look around. We'll scout this place. Hey. 
you just do the classic stuff, which I already own. Those free sample boxes are completely worthless to me. Got too much already. Even if I cared to travel south, I'd not get much further than the Grave Horde. That place disturbs me. Yeah, y'all are not ready for the Grave Horde. It's draining. When the old ones were fresh in their graves and our numbers were still small, it was she who led us through the frozen wastes. We also remember the ravenous tribe who delighted in sucking the marrow from our broken bones. Everywhere Banukai and her Warak fled, the ravenous tribe were never far behind. Seeking a way to defeat them, Banukai went into the wastes and let the wind whip her cheeks. And when the cold brought sleep, she dreamt of light. She saw it behind the world, a great calming sheet of icy blue. And she saw something new. Herds of machines, each filled with the same blue light. When she woke, she knew which star to follow. She walked for many days and nights until she arrived at a temple built from sparkling ice. At the gates of the temple, she was met by the machines from her dream, who bowed to her as she entered. Inside, Banukai discovered the blue light, bubbling from a hole in the snowy earth like a spring. You bid me come, she said. My people need aid. Will you provide it? The machines whispered to Banakai. We go where the light goes. For we are its chosen vessels. There is darkness in your heart. It cannot hold the light for long. Carry it to your people if you must. But the cost will be great. Banakai waded into the pool. The light reared like a nest of snakes and struck Banukai, piercing her skin, filling her up. Banukai did not scream, though she was in agony. Banukai did not collapse, though her limbs shook. She climbed from the pool and carried the light inside her. She marched toward home and the machines marched behind her. As she walked, the light struggled to push its way out of her, but the machines were there to aid her. She sewed her body shut with their cables, patched herself with their metal, and kept the light within. When she arrived, the forces of the Ravnus tribe had surrounded the camp. Although the light had left her with a thousand wounds, Banukai charged. And because she held the light, the machines followed. The Ravnus tribe killed many, but those in camp rushed to join the battle. They gathered pieces of the fallen machines and from them fashioned weapons. And it was with these that Banukai's people repaid the suffering the ravenous tribe had wrought upon them. When quiet descended, Banukai finally fell. The machines bowed their heads and her werak wept. The light she'd held within her drifted from her wounds and rose to the sky. And for just a moment, before life left her, Banukai knew the truth of the blue light. And she felt peace. We remember Banukai. The first to crawl from the cave beneath the world. He brought the machines to us. When Dawn we breaking. speak the name of our tribe. Every time's different. We remember her. And we will not forget. Okay, that was pretty cool. Where's that merchant at? What the hell are you doing up there? Have you ever heard the music of Deep Tim? We remember Bankai when the old ones were fresh in their graves and our numbers were still small. Let me hear the start of this. It was she who led us through the frozen wastes. We also remember there we go. Okay. this tribe. Good story, yo. Let's talk to this guy. This merchant. I want to know about that. I'm always willing for a good climb. Welcome, stranger. May the cut be kind to you. Thank you. So... 
own sort of corruption. I wonder what sort of challenge they present. <sighs> this merchant better have something of value to me. I can't imagine they do, but I hope so. Because I'm not going through this for nothing. Aloy, where are you going? Aloy, what was that? Oh, you want to go this way, do you? Okay. Down button. Square. Hey. Quite a view you've got up here. It's a useful perspective. How fleeting we are when the world is so wide. From up here, you can see how the light paints across the land. Ever changing. That's a lesson. All our marks will pass. That outlook sounds a little depressing for a painter. Haven't met many artists, have you? Song's Edge needs new stories. I scrubbed its past off this rock to start anew, but a new start needs new colors. Fresh pigments, like none have seen. These pigments you want, where should I look for them? Salts gather at the edges of geysers and hot pools. Crystals cling to the rocks and cliffs. The Banuk rock paintings are impressive, but, um... You want to know what they mean? That's not the right question, but I'll answer anyway. Some are a call to the machines. The sacred shapes you see on metal casings or on a cauldron door. Do the machines listen to the call? I don't know. <clears throat> Others like mine are a call to the tribe. You could say inspiration or prophecy. And sometimes even men listen if the painting is loud enough. Have you always been a painter? I've always painted. But I wasn't a painter until I was driven out of Banur. Up there, the markings are eternal. They paint over the same lines, the same colors, over and over. As a child, I learned from copying them. As I grew, my heart sank at the familiarity. All of us Banuk might as well be trapped in glacier ice. We have the look of life, but never really moving. All right, pigment, light salt, medium salt, dark salt, light crystal, medium crystal, dark crystal, light oxide, medium oxide, dark oxide. Cool. I'll see what I can find for you. Seek out the vibrant ones. A spring of sudden color among snow or rock or metal. That's its own reward, but I'd reward you as well. Thank you. Welcome to the cut, stranger. All right, give me a look at this map. Uh, I think we've had enough of a taste of this area. We've got two side quests, Waterlogged and the Shaman's Path. So we can work on both of those. We've got our first new machine and Daemonic Machines. Okay, Daemonic Machines are more powerful and have stronger elemental resistances than their normal counterparts. They are a force to be reckoned with. Strong against shock and corruption. And a scorcher. Scorcher lens is new, yada yada treasure boxes. Okay, so that's enough for the starting episode. Next episode, we'll go check out this and maybe we'll move up towards this tall neck. There's a lot out here to enjoy. All right, but that's enough for now. Thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.